Hello, hello, hello. I think this is recording. Hold on, can I turn this up? <clears throat> hello. Okay, so. I got some information. I got some teeth. I want to talk to you guys today about my favorite president of the United States of America. I am talking about a man known as Thomas Jefferson. Um, and so, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I like Jefferson. I've liked Jefferson since I was a kid. Um, and then as I got older, it was like the more research I did come to find out most of us probably aren't related to Jefferson, but yeah, um, I've been living in DC recently and I went to the De Jefferson Memorial and it kind of solidified this theory that I have because they always like about what is a black person. I've been doing a lot of research on like blacks and Africans and Negroes and all that stuff and come to find out they're being very they're being used very much as though they are this one and the same and they're not and my boy Thomas Jefferson Pete like helped me peep game on that but yeah um in case any of you ever end up in DC if you want to go visit the Jefferson Memorial I highly recommend it um and while you're there you can take a little more notice of the details put into the statue of Thomas Jefferson himself and then when you read his works you might come to find out that he ain't no average white man if he was a white man at all my theory is that he wasn't a white man um I don't know if I could say he wasn't an African man he was an American um but he wasn't what they consider your average white man to be um and his statue kind of proves that to me because when you go to his statue like it's very nice it's set up in like a cathedral style like not cathedral it's more of a dome like they just fixed it up and he's like standing in the middle and like the other lazy asses who are sitting and or on horses and shit and he's just like standing there and if you go around back i like to look at the details on his hair like his hair like they always show these white like founding fathers wearing these pompadour white english british looking um hairs and <clears throat> I think that's just to try to cover up the idea that these were some curly haired motherfuckers and um, Jefferson in particular if like you take the look at his the way he has his hair it looks like it's like not strands of hair but they have it in a ponytail and it looks like it's just one thick lock like literal lock like mine it looks like a lock a dreadlock of hair and his statue um, is black Whereas like a lot of the statues of founding fathers that you'll find around DC, some of them are black and some of them are white, like George Washington and like Lincoln and shit, they're in white marble and um, others around there like Jefferson, his is in black and like other people's are in black. And I'm starting to think that, you know, that's not done by accident. I think it does represent that whoever is like, um, their black statue represents the black person. So I think that Jefferson definitely is not a white man, not a white founding father, even though even if he did come over from Europe. Um, and I'm going to speak more on that, on why that is. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, the whole idea, like I was looking up Jefferson, right? And um, I was trying to look up more like proof or more like historical proof to show that, you know, he wasn't a white man, like the pictures portray him, but that he was a black man. And um, I started looking up like the differences he had between Hamilton, because Hamilton's like this big name in American households, mostly because of the Hamilton musical. And in that, Hamilton comes off as this like, you know, antagonistic hero who like, is the reason why the constitution exists. But as you can see, I have issues with how the constitution is set up. And I'm starting to realize it's because it wasn't set up for the purpose of the common man. Um, Jefferson was more into the idea of a common man. Oh, he was more into ideas of agriculture and farming and like building like the American people or the American United States society that they were trying to build, being focused on, you know, like the everyday man, they should be the voters. Whereas Jefferson, what you come to find out was more for like his idea of the government was that it should have complete control for the greater good versus the individual that it was more like more actually more leaning towards a monarchy than an actual democracy or whatever you want to call it and that it was very much so um geared to represent the well-educated rich man versus you know like jefferson that said the common nigga like the well the common man let me not say nigga <clears throat> um, but yeah, so, well, actually, I'm going to talk about that two later. 
but yeah so it was like very interesting um so i was looking all that up and actually like because the federalist papers are always represented because this federalist papers represent a lot of the what do they want to say how western political thoughts but they don't actually because come to find out you know they were anti-federalist papers that were written by jefferson i haven't looked those up yet i tried to go through the federalist papers first to like just kind of find reason as to why like they fought so hard or what was the reasons to fight so hard for um the constitution but i think it was more of geared towards money because you know hamilton grew up poor but he was like and he wanted that money and so like his, his idea was like governments and like like banks national banks federal banks and like all of this shit that would put pretty much the nation in debt so that people would have to build up from the bottom um that was his ideology and if you couldn't build yourself up from that then you didn't really have no place here um <clears throat> so yeah it was like the I, I just i tried to read the federalist papers them shits is dumb long they mad long they are not written for the common man to go through and i think that's the reason why certain things were slipped into the constitution that just don't add up to what the supposed representation of the united states is today because it's like nobody got time i tried like and i am an avid reader i love reading and i was like i am not gonna go sit here and read through the entire like federalist like papers because it was it like none of it really accounted for much i just think that it started to slip in like it seemed like the government that hamilton was trying to set up was on some illuminati type shit some very secretive like elite elitist type shit versus jefferson um so i was like you know what why am i wasting my time trying to read up on somebody that i don't necessarily agree with let me go read up more of jefferson's writings and you know like a lot of these things are public documents out there they're like available um i found the letter that i'm about to bring up that i'm about to talk about right now um has to do with the idea of where the blacks of america where we originally came from because um, from the evidence that I found, modern day blacks, like all of us, they try to say we were all, every black American in America, they try to say is of an Af the descendant of an African slave. And I'm finding proof that <clears throat> that's not true. Um, actually the term slave itself doesn't represent every black person. Um, not every black person was a slave and not every slave was a black person and um proof from the document that i found on thomas jefferson shows that you know even slavery itself the whole idea of a whole slave there were indentured servants there were people who came over from other countries and didn't have any money and were like given opportunity to work on people's land until they could like you know buy their own or come up that was more common than a whole on a full-on slave but yeah um i found like just coming across like these documents written by like jefferson wrote a lot everybody tried to put hamilton because hamilton's name is signed on a lot of documents concerning the um constitution but when it comes to writing like jefferson was a writer so thankfully he wrote down a lot of information concerning like his ideas which oh shoot what do i do with my um twist tie <clears throat> oh i don't know if i showed you guys um this is wild lettuce it's an herb that I use to um, put with my weed. It's kind of like tobacco. It gives you a little bit, like it's listed as a hallucinogenic herb, but they don't, it doesn't really like hit you as hard as weed, but it does, oh, there, there it is. It does help with like cutting back on the feeling like, but it is a tobacco type type thing. It's just like putting more tobacco in. Um, and I also use spearmint because it helps just, for the smell and to um, the flavor, and then my weed. So my joints aren't that big, like my joints aren't big, and they aren't all weed, it's like a mixture. But this is it's called Zuki's. I been smoking something I was like, uh, what was it, Purple Runts I really liked. And the place that I usually go to, they didn't have any more Purple Runts. So the guy was like, well try Zuki's, it's a hybrid. Cause they know me, I like to smoke stativas and stuff like that. And he keep trying to get me on some indicas. I've never had indica from them. But he's trying to sneak sneak it to me through hybrids. 
and this was okay, but it's not like it ain't what I would want. But yeah, um, <clears throat> so I found these documents. They were on Princeton University, public, publicly available. And um, they were papers written by Thomas Jefferson. And he speaks on a lot of different things, education, Native Americans, which I want to read up more because apparently that's separate too from, you know, the idea of blacks. Um, he spoke about, what else did he speak about? Like he spoke about a lot of different things, politics and stuff. And then I found some of his documents related to slavery and race. And there's one particular letter that he wrote to a dude um, that I want to read. I'm going to read to you guys. Uh, what was the dude's name? Something King. R R Richardson King? Rod Robert King? Or something like He wrote something, a letter to some dude who was, and he was pretty much talking about sending, colonize, sending colonizers over to Sierra Leone in Africa or like sending insurgents over to a place called Africa in a settlement that we know today as Sierra Leone but he describes it not as a country originally but as a company a British company and um, they sent like it's very interesting the people they sent over I'm like making a mess <clears throat> um, to represent well not represent but okay I'm gonna just have to read the letter and I'm gonna read the letter to you and we're gonna go over it but let me check because my mic wasn't recording before I want to make sure that it's recording now so I'll be right back all right I'm back so yeah um I found this document from Thomas Jefferson that I want to read to you guys that he wrote to someone. It's a letter um, concerning their plan to colonize a place known as Africa through a company known as Sierra Leone. <clears throat> um, let me see, where is it? Let me pull up my, my evidence. And don't think that I'm making this shit up. Like, here you go. It's on Jefferson, it's papers, Princeton, edu uh let me can i screen record i'm gonna screen record and if i could add it in later i'll add it in uh okay so here's the letter oh wait no it's not the letter yet wait let me i started screen recording so he has all these documents like it's listed here nicely going to slavery and race and here it is it's rufus king Here's a letter to Rufus King of 13th July, 1802, which was just a few years before the founding of Freetown, um, which is the capital of Sierra Leone. Okay, just listen to this, and then I'm going to like comment throughout. Dear Sir, the course of things in the neighboring islands of the West Indies appears to have given a considerable impulse to the minds of the slaves in different parts of the U.S., a great disposition to insurgency has manifested itself among them, which, in one instance, in the state of Virginia, broke out into an actual insurrection. So here you go right now, they're talking about these people, um, like shit that's going down in the West Indies, because, you know, the founding fathers, like, again, they weren't the main people here. They weren't, they were new. So they were new and they were starting to set up shop pretty much and they were setting up shop with like yeah they did have some people did have slaves but most of these were just like you know servants and farmers who were working to build until they could get on and move on to something new but you know there were people who already lived there specifically people from the islands the west indies and stuff like that and then like you know the people on the motherland and those people probably like once these new people started showing up and they seen this slave shit going on they probably they was in that mentality of whoa 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 like it pretty much seemed like some of them were working and they just like, if you see, like, imagine if you come to a country and you like, or you in a country and you trying to work on this man's farmland and like build, but like the whole time you can see that, you know, you could just take it. Like why, why, why sit there and like bullshit? You can just take that shit from them because like shit, you got a whole house here and shit like that. Like people working, you might as well. So this shit was going down. They call them the Gullah Wars, pretty much. The Gullah Wars. But they try to say the Gullah Wars were all about like slaves rebelling. And it was just blacks just fucking shit up. These were people were just fucking shit up. They just weren't with this new like 
constitution that these people were trying to build, this new, new government that these people were trying to build, calling themselves the president and stuff like that. They was like, fuck all that. Like, we're going to just ride up and we're going to try to take this shit. And that ended up happening in, like, near Virginia, which is where Jefferson was. But you'll see now Jefferson isn't, like, he's not against it, but he's not for it either. He just kind of want peace. Um, but, yeah, let me keep going. This was easily suppressed, but many of those concerned, I believe, fell victims to the law. So extensive an execution could not but excite sensibility in the public mind and beget a regret that the laws had not provided for such cases some alternative combining more mildness to equal efficacy. So pretty much um, what he's saying here is that the, the, the law, like, they pretty much started just executing. I think after the rebellion of 1800, they executed like 26 people or 26 so-called slaves who were responsible for uproar calling, um, for that uproar. I don't know if that was with Nat Turner in them. What year was Nat Turner? I think Nat Turner was a little later, but like say it like, like people was turning up in the Americas, period. And these people like they they were trying to like meanwhile build this new government this united states and so they were like well shit this is going up against these so-called laws that we're trying to get in because the laws were all new so these are going against these so-called laws that we're trying to do so we're just going to try to make an example of these people and we're going to hang them and here like jefferson is pretty much just like like those laws aren't speaking completely for these people like they, they aren't and you'll see later he says they're not criminals they're not felons they're just people who like aren't aren't meeting eye to eye with what we're trying to currently build or where are like we're coming from they call them a what is it called like they call him like i'm gonna just keep on reading he'll he'll let it he'll speak for himself but yeah he's just pretty much saying that these they were just started hanging motherfuckers at that time just to start to lead an example. And he didn't like that, pretty much. The legislator of the state at a subsequent meeting took the subject into consideration and have communicated to me through the governor of the state their wish that some place could be provided out of the limits of the U.S. to which slaves guilty of insurgency get slaves guilty of insurgency might be transported and they have particularly looked to africa as offering the most desirable receptacle so here he is he's separating the idea of insurgents and slaves and africans so if all like all supposedly by the history you've been taught all slaves came from africa but here Jefferson is speaking as though these were people who are already here and just like, you know, not fitting into their ideal of government. And they were actually considering sending them to Africa. So we were made to believe that all the people, like, slaves were being pulled in from Africa when there were some being like people being sent out to Africa as well. And not as slaves, but you know, these were just turned up motherfuckers who they were gonna, as you can see, send to colonize Africa or this place they call Africa. So I'm gonna keep going. They looked at Africa. So now Africa and a slave and an African, like Jefferson has already described them as two separate people. We might for this purpose enter into negotiation with the natives on some part of the coast to obtain a settlement and by establishing an African company, combine it with commercial operations, which might not only reimburse exp expenses, but procure profit also. So here, he's talking about negotiating with the natives, the natives in a place called Africa to send over these blacks guilty of, you know, causing an uproar. So he's sending blacks are separated from Africans or natives of Africa and slaves. So now, right now, they're being described as three different people. And he's talking about establishing an African con company. So he's not even talking about a country or a continent at this point. He's describing Africa as a company. And he's going to send these people to this company that is set up along this coast and speak to the natives about letting them live there and getting money from it. Let's keep going. <clears throat> 
But there being already such an establishment, there was already an establishment like that on the coast by the English Sierra Leone Company, made for the express purpose of colonizing civilized blacks to that country. It would seem better by incorporating our immigrants with theirs to make one strong rather than two weak companies. Colonies, sorry, colonies. So here we are, Africa, this country where African-American slaves are supposedly coming from, is being described as a country, a company. And Sierra Leone, the modern day, you know, Freetown, where they sent all them freed Africans and those freed African-Americans and those Afro-Caribbeans, was a comp- Sierra Leone started off as a company. And here, again, Jefferson is talking about sending their blacks to meet with the European blacks that are already over there. So again, Americas and Europe are being described as two separate places the same way that blacks and Africans are being described as two separate people. And they're sending them over there to colonize. <laughs> There's the blacks. So blacks were sent out to colonize. Not, they weren't brought in as slaves. They were sent out as colonizers. But let me anyway, let me just keep going. Sierra Leone is a business. <clears throat> this would be the more desirable because the blacks settled at Sierra Leone have chiefly gone from these states would often receive among those we should send their acquaintances and relations. So they weren't even being sent out. These blacks weren't being sent out as slaves. They were being sent out, you know, to settle or colonize and their families were being sent over with them. The object of this letter, therefore, is to ask the favor of you to enter into conference with such persons, private and public, so talk to them about it, as would be necessary to give us permission to send thither the persons under contemplation. It is material to observe that they are not felons or common malefactors, but persons guilty of what the safety of society under actual circumstances obliges us to treat as crimes but which their feelings may represent in a far different shape. So these blacks who were turning up, who just wasn't about that like constitution life, they were like, well, these people, they're going to be either killed or they're going to kill us. Let's just send them someplace where we think they'll fit in. Let's send them out to colonize. They represent the Americas in a different way. They'll go out and colonize Sierra Leone. And they describe these people as blacks. And these blacks weren't just American, they were also coming from Europe too. So there's European Blacks, there's American Blacks. And so it seems like in, they settled in a place that in Sierra Leone or on the coast of a place they call Africa. So that means even Blacks in Africa or born in Africa today, not all of them are African. Isn't that a trip? So anyway, <clears throat> They were sending us out as colonizers. We are the col- we are the colonizers. Is that what this is? Okay. Um. But yeah, he was saying like Jefferson was like these. these yeah, either way, these aren't criminals. These aren't felons. These aren't people that we want to send out to you saying we're sending you the worst of worst. We're sending you just people who they don't fit under these current conditions and they're gonna go out and like build their own. So anyway. They are such as will be valuable acquisitions, so to be valuable to the settlement already existing there and well calculated to cooperate in the plan of civilization. So they were sending these people out to expand on civilization. So it seems like civilization, did it start in Africa or did it start in the West? I'm confused. But anyway, let's keep going. This is just, I didn't write this, mind you. Jefferson wrote this and it seems like so far he seems to not be referring to African slaves, but just two different peoples. Anyway, as the expense of so distant a transportation would be very heavy and might weigh unfavorably, so he didn't want to just mash, like send out slave ships and deciding, because that's expensive. So even the idea of a whole bunch of Africans being brought over to the Americas in slave ships just didn't make sense. Transporting that many people, it's like, like even if it wasn't in the best conditions it was still expensive these like slave ships 
the fuck was people getting this money if they was just starting out business in the United States and shit like that? Where the fuck? Anyway, and they want to don't put it all on Europe either because you'll see soon enough. Europe ain't want none of that smoke either. None of these people wanted none of these smoke with this, these blacks. And they were sending these blacks out like we were fucking, like, we could do whatever. But anyway. <laughs> anyway, it's expensive. Unfavorably, in deciding between the modes of punishment, it is very desirable that it should be lessened as much as is practical. So he didn't want these people to be killed. So he was like, let's just send them out, like, somewhere else where they can, you know, do their thing. But, it, like, in order to do this, here's what we should do. If the regulations of the place would permit these immigrants to dispose of themselves, as the Germans and others who do come to this country poor... By giving their labor for a certain term to someone who will pay their passage. So already, people who were coming over to the United States were working, working for people up until an ex up to an extent, till they can get their so like to pay for their either their trip there, or just to get their own spot. By giving their labor for a certain term to someone who would pay their passage. And if the master of the vessel could be permitted to carry articles of commerce from this country and take back others from that which might yield him a mercantile profit sufficient to cover the expenses of the voyage, a serious difficulty would be removed. I will ask your attention, therefore, arrangements necessary for this purpose. So even the, mo the movement of people through during that time, like they all try to make it seem like it was just old African slave trade, the slave trade. No, people were being moved, transported back and forth. Some of them not in the best conditions, but some of them just needed, you know, like were a part of the trade. It was a natural part of trade. Hey, let me ride in your boat. I'll bring over my mama good at like, you know, sewing clothes. I'll bring over some clothes. You could start selling that. That should pay back for me taking this journey on your boat. Not just, hey, we just gonna throw all these motherfuckers onto a boat and like, take them away against their will no even jefferson was saying with the blacks that he wanted to send over to sierra leone make sure that we talk to these people in private and in public and make sure that we have situations set up where their friends and family can also go to if necessary or if they want okay but anyway this is where it starts getting really interesting because right now we're, we've talked about blacks and we talked about africans or natives of africa as two different people the consequences of permitting emancipations be to become extensive unless a condition of immigration be annexed to them furnish also matter of solicitude to the legislator of Virginia, as you were perceived by their resolutions and closed to you. Although provision for the settlement of emancipated Negroes might perhaps be obtainable nearer home than Africa. So now he's bringing in emancipated Negroes. He's bringing in free Negroes. And he says that he wants to consider sending. So now blacks are separate from Negroes. Blacks and Negroes, even though today's in today's society, they try to make it seem like are one and the same. Blacks are one thing. Negroes are another. And he's saying that this situation set up with the free Negroes, they want to send them somewhere too, to some land where they can, or some other place where they can start building their own land and even he's saying, but I don't think Africa is it for them. So now Negroes are also being separated from Africa, even though they say that we are all Af of descendants of African slaves. Some Negroes aren't even African slaves. They just, they are Negroes. And as Jefferson described them, he thinks that they'll be do better off staying closer to home, which is the United States or the country like the West at that time versus being sent over to Africa, where supposedly this is where they came from. Why wouldn't they, why would Jefferson say they would do better at home versus going sending them over to Africa if they were of African descent? So I was like looking up, I actually ended up looking up Negro and come to find out it's like, it seems like with Negro, it didn't represent it wasn't used to describe a skin complexion it wasn't like it, it's weird because in some like languages like in spain and stuff like that negro does mean black but you can you know, like find in certain latin american and southern american countries where they use negro negro negrito negrita and stuff like that and it's not to be describing like somebody's skin complexion it's to describe a person and yeah it seems like when I was looking up the definition of a Negro too, it didn't always represent a skin complexion, but it represented somebody who didn't have their shit together 
um, and who didn't have like own land or property, couldn't properly take care of their families and were working on these fields as a way to do that. And then the emancipated Negroes were the ones who, you know, worked their way up and got out and then they were no longer referred to as Negroes. Like it seemed like once you worked your way out of that, um, that place where, you know, you were working on somebody and built your own, then you were no longer considered a Negro. You were now actually like, you know, part of this, I don't know, separate part of society, but Either way, a Negro wasn't always a term used to describe a black. So they make it seem like during this time with, here we are, Thomas Jefferson, and everybody like, oh, Thomas Jefferson owns slaves, he's racist. But not every Negro at that time was a black. And not every black was a Negro. And not every Negro was an African. And not every African was a Negro. And not every black was an African. It was, it's just wild. But anyway, even he's saying like, you know, the free nigga, like the free Negroes should stay near the States. They shouldn't be sent to Africa. Well, he doesn't know yet, but he said, yeah, it is desirable that we should be free to expatriate this description of people. Cause what the hell is a Negro, right? It's not just a black person. Also to the colony of Sierra Leone. If conditions, if considerations respecting either themselves or us should render it more ex Expedient. I will pray you, therefore, to get the same permission extended to the reception of these as well as those first mentioned, which were the blacks. So here we are again. The blacks and Negroes are two separate people. And at this time, Negroes were, again, just people who were working the fields, who, would, like, emancipated ones at least, had found their way and were, like, you know, not found their way, but got to the point where they could take care of themselves and pay back their debts. And now they're trying to find a place where they can build and then there's blacks who were just already there, came from the West Indies and was just fucking shit up because anyway, I will pray you therefore to get the same permission extended to the reception of these as well as those first one mission, blah, 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 blah. Nor will these be a selection of bad subjects. These weren't bad people. The emancipations for the most part being either of the whole slaves of the master or of such individuals as have particularly deserved well. So even then, Negroes weren't, not all Negroes were slaves. Not all Negroes were slaves. He just said that. Actually, he said that the latter is most frequent. So he wants to admit that emancipations for the most part being either of the whole slaves of the master or of such individuals that have particularly deserved well. The latter is most frequent frequent so slaves were actually a whole slave somebody owned by another person was actually a very rare thing and most of these people were people who just like me not all negroes were slaves and so he's like telling you right now like okay we can send you some negroes too but they they not like it's just a negro has been separated from a slave so far in this document a negro a slave a black and an african are all four completely different things described in four completely different ways but we would be believed that we were all descendants of african slaves anyway the request of the legislator of virginia having produced to me this occasion of addressing you i avail myself of it to assure you of my perfect satisfaction with the manner in which you have conducted the several matters confided to you by us and to express my hope that through your agency, we may be able to remove everything inauspicious, because you're trying to calm these motherfuckers down, to a cordial friendship between this country and the one in which you are stationed. A friendship dictated by too many considerations not to be felt by the wise and the dispassionate of both nations. It is therefore with sincerest pleasure I have observed on the part of the British government various manifestations of just friendly dispositions toward us. We wish to cultivate peace and friendship with all nations, believing that course most conducive to the welfare of our own. It is natural that these friendships should bear some proportion to the common interest of the parties. The interesting relations between Great Britain and the U.S. are certainly of first order and as such are estimated and will be faithfully cultivated by us. So all the information that we're being fed right now in the school system, like, Jefferson was honest like we mostly thought we like we mostly focused on Great Britain in the U.S. but mind you we in this new land with these new people these new nations and we're like beefing like well you know we want we all have different needs 
And here's how we trying to like, but even now, Great Britain, everybody want to make it seem like Great Britain has so much control over the U.S. And it's like, nah, they just have a lot of more back and forth. But I'm starting to think not all white people are British. <laughs> what? Um, yeah. But anyway, these founding fathers, like, ugh. anyway. <sighs> Faithfully coming. These sentiments have been communicated to you from time to time in the official correspondence of the Secretary of State. But I have thought it may not be unacceptable to be assured that they perfectly concur with my own personal convictions, both in relation to yourself and the country in which you are. I pray to you accept assurances of my high consideration and respect. Jefferson. So anyway, so we saw that. Um, and here I'm going to go through, like, just at the bottom, they have, like, there were asterisks or, you know, little marks of information that were up front. Um, and when he mentioned, you know, the whole idea of 26 people were hung in Virginia for complicit, complicity in the planned slave insurrection of 1800. So here they are making, they were making um, an example of these blacks who were causing an uprising. But not all of these blacks were slaves, again. And, um, like... <laughs> Oh, man. And Jefferson really didn't want those people, like, just being looked at as criminals and stuff like that. He just wanted to find them, like, well, I'm, like, whatever. I'm not defending him or anything or speaking on those rights. But moving on. Um, next, <laughs> this part gets me. Monroe, in, on June 15th, 1801, wrote to Thomas Jefferson concerning the resolution of Virginia House of Delegates of December 1800. I got to look for that resolution because it's hard to find so far. For me, or at least I just haven't been looking that hard, that asked the governor to communicate with the president about obtaining land where persons obnoxious to the laws or dangers, dangerous to the peace of society may be removed. So they were trying to look for a place to send people who just weren't going, falling under their laws or weren't listening to their laws. A resolution adopted by the legislator in January 1802 named Africa and South America as potential locations. So here we are again. Um, they're talking about sending people out of the Americas to these places, colonizing or like people obnoxious to the law, sending them to these places. <laughs> these blacks, but they weren't slaves. They weren't all Africans, but they're sending them to Africa. So it seems like more blacks were sent to africa then blacks were sent out of africa which is weird okay next in a letter to monroe of third june thomas jefferson has suggested the sierra leone colony on the western shore of africa as a potential destination for black insurgents black insurgents again blacks and perhaps also for the colonization of freed negroes and persons of color. So again, blacks are separate from Negroes, are separate from people of color. None of them described as an African. TJ proposed to take the matter up with the king. Moreau gave his thoughts on the matter in a reply dated 11 June. So let me cut off this screen recording. I think I got enough. Uh, did it save? It's processing. So yeah, um... So now here we are, and again, I'm like, a Negro has been used to describe a black man, but a Negro doesn't represent, isn't a black man. My bad, I ran out of space. But yeah, so again, not every, it's describing Negroes as two different things, and blacks as two different things. So I already described, like, earlier, um, the information I found on Negro. Um, and that not all Negroes are black. So then I started trying to look up more information on this description that was being used to describe blacks. Because blacks, the term, like everybody always says, oh, black people shouldn't refer to themselves as black because it's like means the absence of light and it's just a color description. But no, it's not. It seems to go much deeper than that. And blacks seem to have been described for like years over, like, okay, here's what I found. So I did some research and I'm trying to find out like the term blacks, what that uses to describe. And it seems like it's not an African. Um, when I go back, like when I traced it back, like the use of blacks seem to have predated the Bible because they claim that um, 
we've been taught in, through the Bible that the first human was Adam. And um, there's actually been a lot of arguments among the religious community that Adam was not the first human and that there actually existed. Well, if he was the first, he may have been the first human maybe, but there existed people human-like before then um, that God had probably made a bunch of Adams before it, like the one that was just described in the Bible with Eve. Um, but they called them pre-Adamites, pre-Adamites. And blacks seem to have been described as far back as to say they were pre-Adamites. Um, it seems like it is in Islam, they call them jinn or yin, and they represent like human-like demons or something like that. Um, they're more demon-like, but it, it, it makes sense when you think about it because the Bible always taught about the fallen angels. And the fallen angels came that were brought down and existed. So it seems like the blacks are described as far back as then and have existed since before then. And it like it, it just made me think and I'm like because that's I feel like that's why, at least for my my experience as a black American, um going through what I thought was an identity crisis because it's like I'm not feeling like I relate to any of these descriptions I'm being told about myself and it seems like <coughs> there exists a separate plane for blacks than for Native Americans than for African Americans than for like Caribbean Americans because they all have a place that they can consider home or that they say that they're native to but blacks it's like I say I'm a black American I like I consider America home but then it's like black like the history black doesn't just represent America the history of blacks don't just represent America they predate Adam they predate they predate the Bible it made me think about that song where um in Kanye's most recent album where he was like um Adam couldn't have been black because a black man would have never shared his rib. And it's like, it's funny, but it's like, yeah, it's, it's peeping game. That's something that's claims that says that we predate this so-called Bible of Adam that starts with Adam. And it seems like I'm wondering then what blacks, just like, like blacks, where, 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 like, then where is it coming from? It's not just coming like civilization doesn't seem to have started in Africa um, the way that they claim or the way that they try to prove it with finding bones and stuff like that and archaeology and I'm not going to go against any archaeologists um, like life work but there seems to be more to the story than just what they're pulling out of the ground you know what I'm saying? So it's like man it just, it has been making me think a lot. And so it's like, I'm doing more research, trying to figure out more. Cause again, like I've always read, read like if you go black, back far enough and you start, start talking about pre-Adamites and you start talking about the um, Canaan, 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 I don't know how you, in, in that curse, in the curse of Ham, in that story that comes out of the Bible, uh, that comes out of the, um, actually, I think that's a Jewish story. And it's just like describing people of the blacks as bad things and they use it modern like they try to say use it in modern day to claim that it's to push forward the idea of racism and whites being better than blacks but it's not that it seems like the blacks have existed for a long time and have been prosecuted for a long time but it's pre-biblical so it doesn't even have anything to do with their skin complexion it i think it's that that curse of like that idea of light versus dark um the of like, like again, the fallen angels. Um, there's always been differences between what's considered good and bad. There's always been that balance, that yin and that yang. And I think um, blacks go back as far as light and trying to distinguish that. So, yeah, I've just been doing like <laughs> all I'm saying. Um, bringing up Thomas Jefferson because again like I said Thomas Jefferson kind of been leading me through a loophole and loops and like and down a rabbit hole but it's one that that's starting to make more sense 
than the stories that I've been told in high school and like middle school and yeah, elementary school about these like it just it doesn't make any sense to me how these people could try to build up some people to believe that they are just descendants of slaves of people who just struggled and like and you see it on all the like media through the slave movies every fucking slave movie that comes out is just these sad people on this field like trying to like singing and trying to like there's some who rebelled and tried to make it better but they've been all like traumatized and brought down and then we're the result of that and it just doesn't add up to me because it just it just it's not making sense with as strong as we are today and as strong as I feel today and as I see my family and stuff like that it's like it's something ain't adding up that they want us to believe that we were all just descendants of slaves and come to find out we're not we're not even all negroes we're not even all africans we are there there's something completely different there that they're sliding past us or they're hiding from us but they kind of give to us when they ask us to check whether we're black or African-American on them damn sheets. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it's wild, man. I'm, I'm just like, try to figure it out, but it's, it, 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 make, it makes me feel good to know like there's like there's so much more to the story that's being told because I don't believe that story. If I if I tried to sit back and listen to the story that they were feeding me in these history books, I would have been claustrophobic. I would have been even more. I would have been feeling more anxious. I would have been feeling more depressed because it's just like it seems like they're telling me that we never win, but it seems like our story stretches so much further back that I was watching a Doctor Doctor Who recently. And I'm on the 11th Doctor, and it's his second season. I think it was like the second episode or the third episode or something like that. Um, and the he was battling these peop these aliens or these creatures known as the Silence. And the Silence, like the way they work, is that like while you're looking at them, like it's not the angels, but it's the Silence. Like while you're looking at them, like you can communicate with them, and they're there, and like you see them. But as soon as you look away, you forget all about them. You forget all about them. They just fade back. And then they've been supposedly existing. They were existing among the humans for thousands of years. Influencing things in the background. Just in the mind. Like in the background without humans even knowing. They influenced the like, the, like going to the moon. The moon landing and all that. The silence had influenced that. Without these people knowing. The humans knowing at all. Unless they like, because every time like they would look at them and they would go through all these experiences with them, but as soon as they looked away, they forgot about them. And it just made me think about the blacks in that sense, because it seems like, imagine being a creature that could just so easily flow into the background like that. And then like, they essentially had control over the world. Thousands of years, thousands of years, they were just pushing it in my little hypnotic subtleties to humans and making them like, killing some in the process but also like hey building rocket ships and shit like that so um yeah it was just interesting but that like it was funny because i watched that episode like a couple of days ago and then it's like now like thinking on how blacks are being described in thomas jefferson's work and just in history in general and <laughs> trying to figure out where it's all coming from is very interesting but yeah, that's about it. Um, I had another video that I wanted to post, but I think this one is it. So yeah, <laughs> let's just keep doing our research and trying to figure out, but let's all remember that not everything they tell us is the truth. You just got to look for it.